Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, this is round two of my uh, set of, of, of uh, Doom reviews here of all my free samples. Um, though I did want to, uh, I meant to talk about this. This, in case you didn't get the good look of it, this is that champagne saber uh, that I use to saber the, uh, and you'd use this end this end here, not this end. Though it doesn't matter because you can't cut yourself. You know, you can stab yourself though. Um, yeah, that was fun at the uh, at my 10th anniversary show. People thought I was cutting my arm. Um, anyway, use that end to do do the sabering. We're not doing any, we're not doing any of that today. Um, so let's get into um, some wine here. I thought that was gonna say something about something, but I can't remember what that something was. Anyway. Let's get into the wine here. Um, so um, the white wines, not all the white wines were chilled. So I got them in the fridge right now. I kept the ones that were in the uh, in the in the, the cellar. They're still in there right now. So as soon as this is done, I'm gonna have to get them out so I can so they can warm up enough. So I'm gonna kind of hang out and do some research. Anyway, so let's let's get this going. Uh, sorry. So um, so my friends at Creative Palette again. Uh, sent me this. This is the uh, what vintage, the 2018 Domaine Bousquet. Um, this is their uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. They call it their Grand uh, Cabernet. Uh, it is organic, and it is from the Tupungato Uco Valley, uh, Mendoza, Argentina. Um, organic. Did I already talk about organic grapes? Yeah, organic grapes. Um, they call this their Grand Cabernet, and I was kind of give you a little history about these guys. So, um, Jean Bousquet in 1990 took a vacation down to Argentina, and um, uh, he's a third generation winemaker. He's from France, and uh, he he uh, uh, visited the Gualtieri Valley, um, which is a scenic, remote, arid terrain high in the Tupangato district of the Uco Valley. Um, it is close to the border of Chile, and um, there were no vines, no, no, no vines over there. Um, altitudes range up to 5,200-ish feet. Um, it occupies the highest extremes of Mendoza's viticultural limits. Um, so basically he fell in love with the place, and he was like, I'm gonna buy land here. His family thought he was insane. Um, so, uh, right now there are 6,100 acres under vine, uh, which is a little bit more than Saint-Julien in, in Bordeaux and uh, double that of Napa's Stagley district, Stagsley district. Um, and it says now constitute some of the most expensive farmland in Mendoza. When he first started buying the property, buying, buying land, it was 125th. Uh, of those for property more established districts of Mendoza, that was the value of it. So, um, like I said, he started buying stuff, and um, in 1997, he bought just uh, just under a thousand acres. And um, let's see here. He he uh, in in 1998, he dug a well, 490 foot 490 foot well to get water. Uh, apparently, his neighbors weren't doing. Uh, water rights and were uh, having failures because they couldn't get enough water because it's basically a desert there. Um, and so, think about this: <clears throat> you're like on the close to the border of Chile, and you basically have the Andes Mountains as a rain shadow. So it don't rain there. Uh, and they, they don't say how much here, but my guess is around five or six inches of rain. Uh, just considering where other areas have rain shadows, uh, maybe even less. Um, let's see here. So then, um, 
It said that he started selling off some of the some of the uh, land instead of retaining just 173 acres by the time he released his first vintages in 2005. But then it says bottle by bottle. Money was ready to buy a vat or equipment. Today, Domaine Bousquet is housed in a striking modern winery, complete with a hospitality area and restaurant, and the property counts for 667 acres plants and vine. So I guess he bought some of it back. I'm not, I'm not really sure how the math worked out on that one, so maybe, Kate, you can help me out with that one. Um, anyway, so his daughter, Anne, was living in Massachusetts, and her and her husband, who is a uh, successful trader with Fidelity, and she's an economist, uh, they started going down there a lot. And um, there was this big devaluation of the currency in Argentina. Um, so in 2005, uh, Anne's husband, Al Amiri, uh, joined, uh, joined his father-in-law full-time and uh, helping with construction of the winery. And then she continued, and his daughter continued to work as an economist, and then she joined the company in 2008. And then um, in 2009, the couple moved down there full time, assuming full ownership of Domain Bousquet in 2011. And then, um, but apparently, they kind of go back and forth between Miami uh, and Argentina. Let's see here. Uh, and then they did a bunch of stuff to basically. They, they call it a backwater. Um, like this place was as rural as anything. So they did. They they uh, they and other wineries did a lot of funding of local you know uh, local wineries formed an alliance to fund construction of a new road to provide better access for employees, uh, material deliveries, and a small but growing number of tourists. Uh, they also the couple also immersed themselves in training a workforce new to wine growing and office work. Uh, every detail had to be thought out had to be thought through from, from transport for employees who didn't own a car to microloans for continuing education. Uh, their um, head of purchasing started off as an 18-year-old high school graduate on the bottling line. Um, and uh, so basically the, the wine industry has really given that area of Argentina like a lot of... Um, uh, of you know, basically got them to where they're at right now. Uh, let's see here. The U.S. market is a primary market. Um, so this is why Anne and uh, her husband um, reside in Miami, but they go back and forth between Miami and uh, uh, Argentina. Uh, they do practice, uh, so, so they have sustainability. And so, so kind of like how California sustainability means you, it's not just how you take care of the land, but it's also how you take care of your employees. So that's kind of what they're doing there. Uh, they do, um, uh, it's um, organic grapes. Let's see, I'm trying to get all the information here real quick. Is there anything else I needed to talk about? Um, let's see here. They now sell over 100,000 cases annually. Uh, in the U.S. alone. Uh, the Grand Wines feature Domaine Bousquet's best grapes from the home vineyard. The original vineyard planted in the late, late 1990s. Uh, it's a 4,000 foot altitude, has lots of diurnal shift, um, which if you've been watching my other episodes, especially with the West Texas stuff and other episodes in the past, diurnal shift is basically you go from your high in the day to Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the, the yawn there. It's kind of late. Um, so let's say it gets up to like 95 during the day and it drops down to like 65, maybe even 60. So you get like this 30 degree, maybe even 40 degree diurnal shift. And what that does is it helps, it helps um, uh, cool the grapes down so they can kind of rest and also allows the acidity to really rise because during the, during the night, acid rises, sugar drops. And during the day, sugar rises, acid drops. Um, let's see here. Uh, they have sandy soil, low fertility, good drainage, lack of salinity issues. Uh, the terroir yields grapes that are the last to be harvested, and the extra hang time ensures heightened riches in body. Let's see, they're 100% organically grown, each cluster and grape carefully selected by hand at the end of April. 
They have a 15 day fermentation in small 10,000 liter steel tanks and followed by 30 days of maceration, which is you know, the great you know, con contact with the grape skins. Uh, Malolactic fermentation and aging in French, oaks, French oak for 12 months. And then that's it because the rest is like describing the wine. All right, so, uh, and suggest retail price is $25 on this bad boy. All right, so let's get this done. Uh, another screw cap, got a Corbin screw cap. It's the right size. I have other screw caps to do, and I only have two of these, I only have two of these versions. These right here are the, are the bigger ones, so I'll have to use VacuVin and drink these puppies quick. We have friends coming over tomorrow night, so we might be drinking some screw cap wines uh, during dinner. All right, I'm excited. Do, do, do. All right, there should be plenty right there. I'm also uh, still testing the uh, iPhone. So I got the iPhone going on. Um, I didn't start the Ah, that's what happened. Somehow the card got protected. So uh, the first, I don't know, however many minutes of audio. Check. Everything should be the same from before. Uh, so the first few, um, say about 10 minutes, five minutes of audio are coming from the camera. Sorry. I didn't double check that it was actually recording because I usually just hit the button and it goes. But uh, somehow the SD card, the little, this little thing on the SD card that makes it protected so you can't record, which is kind of a pain. Never had that happen before. So we're good. All right. All right. So um, hopefully I was able to make the audio sound at least decent and then we're back to normal. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Let's check out the wine. Smells nice. So in the nose, we got a combination of kind of like uh, kind of like some smoke, but like some fairly rich uh, red and black fruit. The smoke's really starting to come through a lot more right now. It's not really smoke necessarily. It's just kind of like. It's kind of like um, like a burnt thing, not so not only smoke, but kind of like a char, kind of like charred, almost like a charred like kindling type of thing. And um, I can't. There's something else, not quite like a charred thing, but something kind of similar to it. I can't really put my my finger on it. But it has a good, has a nice little aroma. Very youthful because it should be. It's eighteen. Let's just taste it, man. Mm. Wow, this is good. First off, you know what's cool about this wine? It don't taste like anything else. Like it doesn't taste like, doesn't taste like Bordeaux. It doesn't taste like California. It doesn't even taste like Chile. Cause Chile really does a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon. It tastes different, which is great, which means it tastes like it's supposed to, or I, get, I assume it's the way it tastes like it's supposed to. I don't drink a lot of cabs from Argentina. Um, so I don't have it like a, um, like, like kind of like a mental picture of what it's supposed to taste like. All I can tell you is it tastes different, which is great because it means I'm assuming it's tasting like terroir. So um, it's got the fruit. I mean, it's got the really black fruit. And it's got the really red fruit. It's got some really good acidity though. Um, the alcohol isn't a whole, isn't really, too, isn't super high. As a matter of fact, let's just see what it is. It doesn't taste super high. It doesn't feel super high. Oh, they also is vegan friendly. So I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. 
Once I look at the um, alcohol, which has got to be right here somewhere. Okay, so I'll figure out the alcohol here in a second. Oh, 14%. Oh, it's, oh yeah, down there. 14% alcohol. Actually, it says 14... I think it says 14.3. It's like the old dot matrix printers. Um, I'll, get the, uh, I'll get the text sheet. They'll tell me. Well, the text sheet says... Well, this is from the 17. 17 says 15%. Um... But it's let's say either 14.3 or 14%. I can't tell. But, I mean, it's really well integrated. It doesn't taste high. Let's put it that way. Um, it's got some really good fruit structure. That that smoky char type of woody thing really isn't, really isn't super present on the, on the palate. It's there, but it's kind of like like the after effects of like the like the barbecue pit. You know, you you, you kind of smell it, and it's kind of like you get like the like a, on a piece of meat, like um, like like a little bit of the carbon, like say uh, that you take like the hot dog got burnt a little bit, um, maybe sausage got burnt a little bit, but it's not like bad. It's not like it's like completely charred, but it's like just enough on there. Like you you taste the grill marks. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, it's super tasty. And while it's in French oak, I don't get tons of oak characteristics. Like I'm not getting like a ton of vanilla. I'm not getting uh, tons of clove or, or thyme, not really thyme, clove and cinnamon and things like that. Um, but, you know, it, it's got a roundness to it. It's got an elegance to it. I mean, it's $25, so it should taste pretty darn good, right? But, I mean... Because it has come from Argentina, um, if this was an American cab, it probably would go for a little bit more. And that's a great segue to say, soon, uh, I forgot what day you're seeing this. I mean, I'm recording this July, uh, you know, 1 in the morning on July 11th. Oh, it's actually July 11th, 1 11 in the morning. It was 24 seconds when I looked at this. It wasn't quite 1 1 1 1 1. Um, I think this is coming out like in August. So, you know, you're going to see this way after I record it. But um, I guess the episode will be either late August or early September. I'm going to do a, a, a comparison of cabs from California. Uh, anyway, yeah, if this was probably in the United States or, you know, California cab, it would be probably a little bit more. Maybe I'm not saying like 60 or $70 more, but I could see it being closer to like a 30 or $40 cab from California. It's really nice. Kind of want to have this for dinner tomorrow, so kind of feel bad I used the Corvin on it, but well, you know. Though then again, it's it's a probably the highest end wine of all the screw caps that I'm going to re review today, so it's probably best to use the Corvin cap on it. It's also something else. I want to say anchovy, but it's not really fishy. There's something else about it. I, I can't put my finger on it, what it is. But something else that actually I like, I don't like seafood at all, but there's like this kind of a savoriness to it. Not quite like a smoked meat, even though I get the smoke and the char and all that. There's like a savoriness to it. Anyway, it's really good wine. If you like that style and you want to try something different from Argentina and that you don't really we see a lot and you, you want to throw down 25 bucks ish um you should buy it it's it's darn tasty i like it all right so that's gonna do it for uh this episode click the links above to friend me up click the links below to uh find out more about this you get the donate button over there send me some ducats um i'm going to oregon there i've set it on video now i have to go um though between now and the time you see this video that should already be established with the winery so i'm going to oregon so if you want to hook a brother up Send a couple ducats to help me with the with the plane ticket or the rental car or the hotel room or you know buying a buying a buying a Big Mac or something like that. Uh, please do, and uh, yeah, we'll see everyone again next time.